For seven weeks, we have been closely following the Gabby Petito case and the search for Brian Laundry. each night bringing in experts to help us dissect the investigation. One of those experts is former FBI agent Jennifer Koffendoffer. I just want to see that surveillance report because I find it very difficult to think that they would not recognize a male versus a female. I think many people, uh, myself. And while our conversations with Jennifer have focused on the Petito case, there is a side to Jennifer that you didn't know about. And it is the reason that she got into law enforcement. As a college student, Jennifer was walking home one night when a man grabbed her, tried to take off her clothes and drag her into his car. Thankfully, a police car scared that man away, but that traumatizing experience revealed Jennifer's calling and a new purpose to pursue criminal justice and eventually join the FBI. Tonight, Jennifer is here to talk about her personal journey and also the impact that Gabby Petito's case has had on her and Jennifer, as you know, so many. Thank you tonight for sharing um, your personal story. Hi, Marnie. How are you? Well, I'm good. And I heard about this a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I just, your resilience and your choice to do what you do um, is truly remarkable. So I think it's powerful, and I hope people at home can connect um, to, to what happened to you and what you did, um, more importantly, in the years that, um, that happened afterwards. I want you to take us back, as difficult as it may be, to the night that you were attacked. Yeah, it's something uh, interesting, Marnie, that you don't think about in those specific details a lot when something like this happens. But what happened to me was it was a Monday and I had uh, just left a sorority meeting. It was about 10 o'clock at night. And I remember it was so vividly cold that night. It was about 10 o'clock and I was actually going to a girlfriend's apartment to study for Spanish with her. And as I drove across town, I actually did think I saw lights following me as I was driving. But as young girls would do at the time, I didn't really think much of it and proceeded on to the apartment complex. I pulled into a parking spot and again, it was really cold. I had a dress on. And so I removed the textbooks from the back of my car and started walking toward the foyer entrance of the complex. And um, as I started walking, I could hear footsteps behind me. And I turned and looked and immediately when I saw the man, I knew I was in um, a lot of trouble. I dropped my books and ran as fast as I could possibly run to the foyer entrance door, grabbed the door, but just as I grabbed it, he came behind me and uh, put his, it put me in what they call a carotid hold, which is where you take your, your arm and, and you squeeze it uh, around, uh, around the neck. And he put me to the ground and begin to try and rape me. Uh, fortunately, I was screaming. At that point, I didn't know how to defend myself, uh, but everybody has a fight, flight, or freeze syndrome that comes about them. For me, I'm definitely a runner. I'm a fleer, and so I wanted to flee, um, which helped me out a lot. I screamed, and somebody in that complex um, I believe the father actually of the girlfriend I was going to see called the police and we both heard sirens. So in this process of him, you know, attempting to uh, try to rape me, uh, we both, you know, could hear the sirens. And um, so at that point, he pulled his pants back up and, and began to drag me out of the building and um, to a car that was waiting uh, with his accomplice. So he was trying to rush and get me out. And it was kind of like uh, the child when they grabbed the railing on the uh, outside uh, banister area. And I grabbed that and just held on as he tried to pull. And we could hear those sirens getting closer and closer. And then he, he uh, let me go and ran toward his uh, accomplice's car and 
got in the car and they spread away and I was pretty hysterical. Um, I remember just running up and down that apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And that's the story. It's so traumatizing, Jennifer, and horrific. I, I don't even have the words to describe it and you, you lived it. Um, thank you for, for sharing it. It's powerful and it's important because so many women experience the same thing that you did. And the man who assaulted you, as I understand, was never caught, but police said that you were not his only victim. Right, there were approximately a dozen women that were attacked. And um, it's really been kind of a great white whale for me. I mean, I would love to get some of those guys that you saw in that folder or in, in the preview uh, that are my really dear FBI classmates that are now retired. And I would love to have us go and, and find that, that mm. man, because I think we could. And it definitely inspired me to go on and put other bad guys in jail. And I think more than anything, and I know I seem vulnerable right now, I'm just kind of reliving that, but not to be vulnerable again and to learn the best techniques and be part of the best organization that I understood existed for um, putting bad guys in jail and being able to fight back. You took that experience and you pursued your passion. Uh, you were great at it and you made a difference, especially having a woman in the position that you held with the FBI as an agent. Before I let you go, Jennifer, uh, we have asked you so many questions about Gabby Petito's case, about what has happened to her. Uh, your professional opinion about the investigation is what you have shared. But now knowing uh, what you personally experienced, how has Gabby's story impacted you? Well, I, I think that her whole situation is very personal to me. And it's because I understand that innocence. We were at the exact same almost time in our lives. And it's an innocent that you can, you know, it's it's difficult to explain that uh, that you never have again. And when I found out that it was manual strangulation that took her life, uh, those thoughts of um, being strangled because it's horrible, uh, of course came back. And it's just very personal how she passed. Right. Jennifer Coffendoffer, uh, your vulnerability is powerful. And as I said, it's important. And there's someone on the other side of that screen who has experienced it or will learn from your story. Thank you for your professionalism and thank you uh, for your personal story. Thank you, Marnie. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.